Hello my friend, we build a retain wall in here. We had the soil compact, we have uh, probably about 10 inch of gravel. This is gonna be a 6x6 six six retain wall, nice and thick the gravel. Then we're gonna compact it a bit more and then lay down the 6x6. Six six. Like you guys can see, that is the first one. We're gonna put a big O behind it, that way get all the moisture from the soil. Because it's gonna be some moisture in here, that way it keep it safe. And we're gonna fill behind the retain wall, we're gonna fill with gravel. That way is less moisture behind it. The 2x6 that we use is they are ground contact, so they are okay to be contact with the ground. But once you, if you put soil against it, it's all the time wet, would not last long. A wall like this one, it, it would last about 40 years if you do it right, 40 years. So by the time this wall is gone, probably I will not be here, but gotta do it right. I keep you updated as we're going, doing some clip. Yeah, my friend, here on my retain wall, I'm just uh, put a four feet riba, stab on this first six by six down. Like you guys can see here, my holes, they're about three feet apart, because gonna be a lot of pressure on this wall. So what I'm doing here, I'm just drilling, use a five eight three bit and put a three quarter inch riba, that way it goes nice and tight, that way it doesn't move. This is the on the first six by six first we align it we level it we just prepare everything and now we just put the riba down usually i just do four to five feet in this case the wall is gonna be quite a bit high about uh, somewhere from 42 to 48 inches we just gonna put some extra riba that way the thing hold nice and tight in there yeah guys, big go pipe is going from that corner to from the garage. Go, go, go behind the wall. You guys can see here. Gonna go straight to the other side of the garage. Right down there, so. There's one big pipe going around. That way take out all the moisture. And then we're just gonna fill this guy with gravel. I'm use the drill to drill a pilot hole for the nails. That way it's a little bit easy and the wood not crack. Pilot hole just go pretty much on the first piece of wood. The second one the nails will hold on it. The nails like you can see here the distance. We are about two feet apart, something like that. You could go a little bit less, but I just want to be safe on this one. The initial nails for a six by six wood. It is a nice sunny day, but cold. The ground is uh, kind of uh, frozen right now. Just in the morning, you can see on the wood the little bit of ice in there. It is gonna go away in a bit, gonna get better warm up a bit and then uh, how it goes. We are in Canada. Yeah guys, here for my retain wall. Put some brace in there to hold it on place. Again, a four feet riba. Like you guys can see in there, this guy here is a four feet riba going down on both sides. And that would hold the weight of the soil, you'd hold it down. Just make a cut that way, once you look from the other side, you don't see the wood passing this way. Now the wall would be clean. Somebody would look into it. Sorry, they say the wall is not braced, but it, it is braced. Yeah guys, I'm here in my retain wall going, like you guys can see, the corner here just to show you guys what I do in here, I just like see a line on this side, and then I align on the other side too, so, and then I grab the square, mark another line, because this one I just want a nice cut, because this one might be exposed once we do the pave, down there we didn't mind but just cross it over, this is gonna be on the ground anyway, then all the time we treat the end of the wood, that way it doesn't get rot or every cut. Let's work. I'm gonna cut this babe. And like you guys can see, just need to put some more brace on this row. We have it braced up, even the corner down there. This cut here, we have it on 45. If we cut the uh, 20, 2 and a half on each side, it's but okay. But I just want to make sure this is nice and tight. And on the corner here, we just make a kind of little step to low it down. Yeah guys, like you can see, I just had a pencil underneath this guy, just to lift it up a little bit. Okay, and then once I have this one on place, like you guys can see, I'm just gonna mark right there. You can see the mark for the next one, and I just gotta do the same way. There you go guys, like you guys can see, the wood is not straight wood that we've seen. Like you see a little bit difference in the... 
Once you go here a little bit the other way, we just ward them. They're pretty, quite a bit crooked. I'm just gonna step a little bit away and then you can see the difference on those pieces of wood. You can see the gap, right? Doesn't matter which side you put it, it's crooked. So we just try to find the best way to work with the wood. We just make it to work. The brace, we're just gonna put like you guys can see, my brace gonna be all done from the inside. On this row from here on, I'm gonna put another set of braces. I'm gonna brace this uh, 45 degree. I'm just gonna use a, a 4x4 right? in there and then I just gonna put the brace in brace in that way and that way I just gonna have two braces going two different sides this is why I just gonna screw and put a piece of a steel angle against this wall that way is more support and get it done that way once you look from the outside you don't see the brace part going this side because most of the time when we do it we just put a, a six by six across and make the brace this case I just don't want to see any brace on this side here guys I paid drill all the holes to put the nails on that way the wood won't crack go from there and then when I put the nails I just treat the nails I will show you to show you guys I just do like that with my nails a little bit treatment that way once it's gone the hole once I punch them in all the one way down it is treated to protect the wood from rotten all right this is a little bit simple trick that works i just push them inside the treatment and go from there all the way down is nice and treated hello guys brace is done in here like you guys can see a lot of brace Probably I overdo it, you know, because I have the extra wood, all treated wood, ground contact. Still gotta put few more on that end, like we done in here. This wall not gonna go anywhere. Make a ton of brace and stuff and gravel. The way we fill in this stuff in here, just like that. Gravel, sand, and keep load them out, both of them at the same time. That way you have all gravel on the pipe. Hello my friends, Bayani here. My retain wall is up and I'm just filling back on it on a gravel and start to fill in with sand. What I'm doing, I bring the gravel up to the top of the retain wall like you guys can see big old pipe is there the way you're gonna do here I just put some uh, had some block just put some block that way separate the sand from the gravel here we just have to raise up the distribution box that way gonna be the height of the paving and uh, it's still a little bit fresh I just try to remove the form but it's a bit fresh we just done it last night and it's not uh, enough time I just gonna give it another day and then I continue the job and we have lot of braces all size all with riba riba on it end of the brace like you guys can see riba everywhere so yeah just to be safe all the riba all this thing because this wall is holding quite a bit of pressure the house is up there and uh, we're gonna have a car driving up here so all the time a car pass by it is a little bit movement Tain wall is uh, completed took a little bit of work but it's done always start with the sep tank to check the sap tank on the end very much we turn uh, upside down the backyard to find all the distribution box that uh, we have five in here so they are all nice and accessible now that one in there we just uh, we have to raise it lift it up a bit that we have access to it once we pave this area and I'm happy with the hatain wall like you guys can see gravel is from the bottom up to the hatain wall behind the hatain wall we have the big old pipe behind the wall that we remove a moisture and at the same time would be some air circulate between the big old and the gravel so it would last longer. Big old is still there going down uh, just on the process of digging to connect the main pipe for drainage and uh, let's go very much how it goes the big o the way you do it i show you here in the sand where you can see you guys can see in there gravel underneath gravel on top and uh, the way to go to tell you the truth probably no water gonna run inside this uh, drain pipe behind the wall but just in case we have it there and have it connected as this place is on the slope and it's uh, very much was is sand and rock in here i just show you here just uh, you guys to see this is the type what we have 
have underneath so it's just a rock and sand and very well drained soil yeah guys like you see here i have my my septic tank is repaired everything's on place we raised this uh distribution box because we have it in here so that way we can assess it when we pave and the rest just go like that oh that one there because i had gonna have a, a bathroom down in the shop i just uh the pipe is a little bit close to the surface i'm just concerned about freezing i just did it with a uh, exterior form five inch on top five inch on bottom and wrap it around all on a exterior form that way it helps a bit because we didn't have other way to do it we just had the sap tank right there and the pipe would just go straight to it and sap tank is working good the pipes in here once we have the pave and then i cut it and put a lid on all of them and this pipe is just for access like you guys can see in there nice and clean that give us access to to the sap tank this pipe uh, we didn't have access before was all covered up now we have uh, access to clean it to do uh, what we need to do right i love you guys see you soon